So, we got a great class. Everyone's got their game today. As I said, we're going to learn how to get... And you guys know what that means, yeah? I'm not like, it's not like English slang or something. I have a question. Yeah. Could you have sex with a girl on your period? With your what? On your period? No. No? It's one, like, any normal human being would sense that it's like not the time. It doesn't have to be like a Jewish thing, just a normal human being. Um, I mean, I have met people who thought it was amazing, but... Yeah, like, really? Like the blood What's wrong and, with exploring... But I, I was a bit like, 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 even when I wasn't religious or spiritually involved or even knew much about it, just my <laughs> intuition, my gut feeling is that's disgusting. Like, that was my... About those people. Not, yeah. You know, that's what I felt like, ugh. Like, and yes. it put me off that girl and that person and that guy, and it just was like... That guy. that guy. Well, not from Canadian, just being guy. friends with him, being friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt like there's something, they're just like going the low game. Like, there's standards. We mentioned in North London, like where I grew up, there was like a standard. It wasn't, you know, it doesn't matter religion or not. They're, they're, we were selective, who we hooked up with. Uh, Are we having air camp? Okay, no problem. Did you the air room? So wait, you were selected? What do you mean? No, the people are selected there. Like it's what do you call it snobbery or like standards or you know your preferences. But today we're going to talk about not just not just that. It's actually the real point behind it. We're going to talk about two really hard stages in our class development and intimacy. Two really hard points. Like for me, these. Are the first one's actually really hard. The second one is, once you've got the first one down, it should be easy. It should come easy. Like, as we're saying, getting laid shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be the, the challenge. The challenge is the first part, which is listening. Yeah? Listening to, not just this class, but listening to anybody nowadays is pretty hard because we're so distracted. But another issue is, to really listen to someone means, and this is, this is going to be a challenging point. Well, the first thing I just, I, I hope, I hope your Sukkot was good. Yeah, everyone enjoyed it. I hope your general experience. I hope what we learned about last time it was pretty. <laughs> no, it was pretty intense stuff. Yeah, That's cool. Sukkot. It was pretty intense. We we talked about porn and, and and you know pretty intense subjects. We got pretty deep in it, and I, I listened to it a few times myself afterwards. Not because I like listening to myself, but because sometimes when you say stuff. In an hour time, the, the, one, your questions are good, which, once again, you're always welcome. That's why I said, bring your game. I want to hear from you. But also, like, when I went over it, I really understood it better. So that, that's important. Like, review a little bit, go over what you're, what you're saying, think about it a little bit more than just, you know, superficially, we had a cool session, because this is stuff that I hope will be game changers in your life. You know, one of the things I worked at a program called Australia years ago, and a lot of the guys were going to leave uh, after a year, and they were going to go to university or college or whatever you want to call it, yeah? And the likelihood of them intermarrying was pretty high, like based on statistics. So my, one of my game plans was like at least to help a guy know that one of the goals is to end up with a Jewish lady if you're going to get married, yeah? So that would be a good, a good accomplishment here as well. But what I would say now, how to really listen, this is going to be a game changer in relationships. This is like, this is like, it's going to put you on a whole nother level. Because to listen to someone is really hard. Like, I know myself, being married 23 years as Hanukkah, that to actually listen to another person, even if you love them, even if you're like intimate with them and everything else, it's a really hard habit, task, well, however you want to describe it. When you listen to someone, often what you do is you listen to your own script of what you're imagining they're saying. You're not really listening. You're not listening deeply. You're not really hearing what they're saying. It's true. Like how, how many people right now with the elections, I'm sorry to go there, but we just have to see, for example, how, how many people notice that no, most people aren't listening to each other? Like the two sides are not really listening other than just how do we know? ripping the crap out of each other. Yeah? How, how do we know? that it's not happening, like politics used to be a discussion, now it's like a war, yeah? Because everyone has their opinion, they have no, they, yeah. they have no, they have no uh, 
capacity to change that. Okay, what else really do they have on, online? What, very good, but what else do they have online? It's just in echo chamber. Very good, echo, that was what I was looking for, echo chamber. They sort of echo each other and it just gets round and round and round until they're, all they're hearing is just their own tribe, as yeah, Joe Rogan always says. The thing is, the thing about right? uh, argument is that you should be, you have to be open to hearing the other person's side. You know? When these uh, uh, political arguments, there's no, yeah. uh, like they're, they're not open to hearing anyone else's side, but they're <coughs> thinking so it's not even an argument. Yeah. What do you think of the fact that there's been a bunch of people that switched the room? We're going to just get back to listening and intimacy in a moment, but... You know, the people who were originally Dems and became Republicans, that, does that mean they listened? Or they just got, I don't know, they got better? Well, Who's do the candidates? But there's less of that happening now than there was. Who's winning? Years ago. No, so, no. I don't know who's going to win, but it, the gut feeling is Trump, but oh. the practical feeling is who knows, because we don't know how, how honest it's all going to go. Like, it's, it's complicated. It's complicated nowadays because my one of my friends who just got back from America, he just walked in to the to vote like last week and no one really asked him nothing other than his name, no ID anything. So he really? could have just come in ten different times. Yeah, but what state? With different names and you know. Depends what state. It was in New York. I'm saying New York doesn't matter. Pretty doesn't matter. That's true. I'm saying like if you're in a swing state, they're very much. Uh, they're going to be more on the game. Okay, Not I hope Michigan, so. Michigan, Wisconsin, and New York. They were up. Michigan, Wisconsin, both right there. Yeah. No, so that's pretty wild. But Pennsylvania. the point is, it, it's it, the fact they're not even listening about that, like that they're not on their game about how to do an election properly and really be, you know, consistent and clear with the rules. And there's all kinds of politics, just even with how they vote, is already showing how lack of conversation. And, the, you know, that's one of the reasons why I love these long form com- podcasts, because you actually hear real conversations. Joe Rogan, for example, is a phenomenal listener. Yeah, he really knows how to listen. So people are impressed. When they go on his podcast, they feel like they've been listened. They feel like they've been validated. And they feel like they're getting a real conversation and not just someone's got an agenda and trying to get them to come out with something that they want. Now, that's one of the issues for us. Let's say as a man, would you say... Well, that's a big piece of it. Would you say that when you're in a conversation with a lady, you have an agenda? Let's be honest. Um, yes. If, you're, if you are looking yeah. for something more than just sex, then... No, so he, he said it, if you have a bigger Even goal... if you are looking for something more than sex, you can still have an agenda with the lady. That's true. It's just something more than sex. Yeah, no, that's true, because we, like we just said, there's loads of agendas nowadays, so we can get caught up in all kinds of stuff, not just the sex. You know, you, you could want power, you could want uh, to play around with someone. Like, one of my, my problems was, I knew I was a good-looking dude back then, so I enjoyed, like, the arrogant game, if you know what that is. Like, the, yeah. Check it. Yeah, it's like that, yeah, you go yeah away. like you're just playing with them. Like my wife accused oh, my me of that is, a yeah. lot back then. Yeah. Like playing with their minds, enjoying that sort of oh, like attention that they were like start to obsess over you and you're in control kind of thing. That that was something I used to do a lot back then, which is you know not so nice. Maybe I do it in a more subtle way nowadays because when you get older, things get more like hidden. Like you get more expert stuff and you have to check deeper what, what you're up to. It's more obvious then because I was a young dude and I didn't really. I didn't have so much self-awareness, but it got pointed out to me a lot. I was doing that to women. But you have to, the point is, you, you have to look at this lady as our own person with our own life and our own goals. And something which the world was very not good at, historically, is, a, is giving value to a lady. Like the, you know, men like, look to them as, you know, as historically as you know, all kinds of things other than real people that have opinions and that you can learn from and grow. Obviously, very spiritually deep people would always look at their wife with such respect. You know, they'd, they'd understand all their women. They'd understand that there's a tremendous person there who's giving them a, a tremendous insight to life and not just what they can get out of them, like do this, do that, my pleasures, my needs, this, this kind of headspace. But, you know, we're talking about us regular, normal people in, in the end of days. Like, we're 2024 and we're, we're in a new Jewish year right now and we're like, we're looking at ourselves. And we're in Israel and we're thinking, you know, how do I want to talk to this lady? Like, do I really want to hear what she has to say? So one of the things that holy, holy people do, uh, or good psychologists, psychologists or therapists, or as we said, an example like Rogan, they're able to really listen to people. And that is a whole different level of relationship with people that gives you a heads up. Because once you've really validated someone, see, what, what's the problem? When you listen to say a girl, one of the things we do 
we, we know that they're more, maybe not all of them, but many, a lot of them are more emotional. So we sympathize, yeah? You know what sympathy is? We're not really empathizing, which is a deeper level. Really getting what they're saying, like being able to sort of enter a little bit what they're feeling. We're just sympathizing. Oh, I feel sorry, you know, shame. I'm good at that. That's something I do. So I really empathize to like really hear in a deep way. So the way we explain it is listening to what <coughs> needs to be understood, not what I understand. Meaning you empty your mind of your head and you learn to listen to them. That's part of the challenge. It doesn't mean you're not thinking. It doesn't mean you don't have your own opinions. But you've, for a moment, allowed yourself to really hear someone else. And I'll tell you why that's really, really important for the next point, which we're going to talk about, int intimacy itself, getting laid, we mentioned. So synergization is called in the, in, the, in the journey we're going on together, based on Stephen Covey. The idea of synergization means to really join with another person, in the full sense. And when you join with another person, one plus one equals five, equals ten. You, you, equals eight. Yeah, equal multiplicity. You, there's the concept of babies, but there's also the and reality of babies, but there's also the reality of becoming more enhanced as people, because two people together are much more powerful than one person by themselves. Everyone admit that? Yeah. Like we're doing a class right now. If I would talk to myself, which I do sometimes, and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll video, I'll do a class by myself in a room. So it's, it's a much lesser level class if I'm just talking to myself. I'm talking to real people who are engaged in the class, so it's a whole nother level. So we can see, we all witness, we're, we're not good listeners, yeah, let's admit, yeah, I know I'm not. And I'm like, I didn't grow up with these phones and all these devices, so there's, in theory I could have become a better listener than the new generation because I didn't have all these distractions like you guys, but somehow I still managed to find myself distracted and I had my goals and agendas of what I wanted. Like, i give you an exact scenario. You want to you wanna have a night with your lady, yeah? Please God, if you're married, that would be the ideal. So now you're sitting there, it's the, there's no kids around if you have kids, there's no distraction, no noise, no phone calls. You've, you've managed to get done what you need to go on, and so is she, and now it's an opportunity. Now, the way my wife says it, is you've got to stage your life for living. So what does that mean? You've got to create an environment that's going to make the relationship more likely leading to intimacy. So how, one, one of the things we just said, you've dealt with everything, you're not available now. People want to contact you, bye-bye. Either you're in airplane mode, your phone's not in the room. One friend of mine who I'm actually going to learn with later on today after I do my business stuff, he said to me he's, uh, he doesn't even bring his phone into his room. You ever thought about that? My parents did that for me. Yeah? Yeah, you don't even bring your phone into your room. Imagine that. Going into your room and having a night of sleep without a phone. <laughs> And we're not talking just because of Shabbat, disconnect, we connect. We're just talking about like just a normal night in the week. You want to have a real sleep. Apparently, my friend told me, and he's a doctor. It's very nice to learn with a doctor because he actually knows stuff. And he said to me that we're just having the phone in the, in the same room, even on airplane mode, it still affects the quality of your sleep. Yeah, it does. Because there's uh, waves, connect waves. And also subconsciously. <laughs> subconsciously you know that you, you could maybe just change that airplane mode very sec any second you know it's just a switch or, you know just a slide or whatever you do on your phone to make a change but the point is that now you're in a, in a with someone else and you want to be intimate so what's going to happen brother like if you're going to be busy on on the gram taking care of your profile and statuses what's the likelihood of anything happening at this moment not much, very yeah. Low. Very low level. More followers. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at other, other girls on Instagram, and then she even sees you doing it, yeah, and messaging them, DMing them, yeah. But what's going to happen then? You probably not forget about intimacy. You're going to get like a punch or something. But the point is that when you're in a situation, you have to create a setting. You have to create an environment that's going to enhance. So obviously, a bit of music maybe, if that's your thing, a nice drink. Something to chill with Probably together. Huh? Role playing. You tell us which. You tell us which. What? Playing <laughs> video games. Video games are not going to do it. I mean, us, look, now, we are in a generation where there's all kinds of people got all kinds of fetishes and things they're into. So maybe there are some girls I've heard about it. There's a guy I follow called Tom Billu. So he's like obsessed with, like, I haven't, I haven't listened to him too much recently, but he's obsessed with, like, video games and stuff. That's one of his things. So he needed a woman who would be into it. But that was like his need. And so she got into it for him, yeah? But um, I don't know. 
I'm not suggesting that, yeah? I'm saying, like, you've got you to, like, work out what is going to get her into a state of mind where she's going to feel you're fully focused and you're actually listening to her emotional needs, her experiences. I know this all sounds really painful for us men, but it's actually, if you get it good at it, it's like a game changer in your life. Because you have now a woman who's emotionally full up. She's like, like you, when you fill up petrol or you've got a, your Tesla and you fill up the battery and you know you're 100% charged or your phone or whatever it is that you care about being fully powered. For a woman, this is what gives her energy, gives her a feeling of validation, like the concept of a sun and the moon. You ever heard this idea? The man's the sun, the woman's the moon. So now if the sun is shining on her, she's going to be bright, she's going to have light. Yeah, she's going to be fully energized. But if the sun is like around off on some other side of the planet, even though it's apparently in the same room, but really he's not there. So she's not receiving any light. She, she in a deep way, needs to, to know that your, your light is towards her. My wife said yesterday, we didn't see each other so much because it was my daughter's birthday and my son went back to Lebanon. And after we had our little, little birthday brunch, my son went off back off to Lebanon and and my wife went out with my daughter to see my other daughter in Jerusalem. And, yeah, I just didn't see her. I was busy working and it's one of those days and I had to come back late because of a party my friend had. So she was like, you didn't smile at me once. You didn't connect to me. You didn't give me that feeling. I, we were at this birthday brunch, but apparently I was more focused on my daughter, which was actually the right thing to do then. So I didn't really like connect on that, in that way. And a woman, if she really cares and wants you, she's going to want that moment, that smile, a look in the eyes, a feeling of validation for her and, uh, and to compliment her. Like, these are real things. Like, I don't know if you guys do this like, in your relationships, but it's, it's like such a simple concept, but it's so hard. Because the, the other point is they wanna, you have to be authentic. This is another thing in politics which is a lost art. Real authentic people. There are a few, thank God, I think, I hope. But polit- being authentic is something which is like a real... A real uh, a real relationship scorer because she needs to know what, when you're saying something that you really mean it you're not just playing a game it's not just you've got all the right words so one of the things I hate is superficiality like saying all the right things and not feeling any of it I don't like that uh, even if it works I don't like it you, you guys feel that? Um, I think that you say what the girl wants to hear even if you don't feel it? well she doesn't get mad otherwise well he is right on the side there is a certain idea of fake it till you make it that's why, you know, each person's going to have to work out what the tools will work for them. Fake it to your maker is a real thing. Like, smile to, like, pretend you're in a good state. Give, give the warm validation. Or use all the tools you've got, even if you're not really feeling any of this, just for the sake of getting to that point where she suddenly relaxes, she's more open. Because you have to understand the, the, the concept of intimacy, of becoming one with another woman, yeah, is, yeah... Well, a with a woman, yeah. No, no, it's a, it's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Is you, you, she, even physically, she, her body will, will resist. Like a woman only opens up if after a certain amount of emotional and physical stimulation. Like I, I mentioned to you a bunch of times. From to- it opens up physically? Or? Yeah, also. Physically, the body can wow. repel you. It can repel you physically. It can literally repel a man. If she's, if she's not feeling it and you're wanting it, she can physically repel you. Like it's, that, that's one problem. It's, it has, everything has to be done with. But I'm talking about where you say you're in a married relationship. You're married. I'm talking about marriage now. So there's consensus. Yeah? You've already consensed. You've already had the consent. Like you're in a real relationship. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, you've already got to that point where you're, you're sexual. It's, that's not your issue. The issue is, right this moment now, she's just repelling you. She's not like physically hitting you or something, but her body is not stimulated. It's just not in the mood. Either she's tired, which is a very important point. Don't try to be intimate with a tired lady. It's a waste of time. Unless you've got some... What? She's tired. There's no point. Oh, okay. Like, you have to time things. Like, a woman is a person with her own needs... And uh, it's not just, once again, you've got to just get out of your own head. You've got to look at this person, that she has her own emotions, her own journey in life. If you're totally into your drive, then you're going to miss all that. And all you're going to be thinking about is, 
and it could even lead to anger. I don't know if you've ever know, had this feeling, but you start to feel like, why is she rejecting me? So frustrating. And then it starts to escalate and you could even get angry towards her, like, you know, God forbid, like people can ruin their lives with this kind of bad process, like in the sexual connection, because they're not, and then it can get, to, God forbid, even people get, you know, back in the old days, violence, yeah? Like a man wants what he wants and starts hitting his wife around, yeah? Even nowadays. Huh? Even nowadays, though. It's still, but it's, it's, thank God it's more called out. And it would be more, there's more resources to catch it, and it's, it's more looked down upon. It's not like, there are some cultures that apparently accept it, yeah? You know, I'm not going to say who, because I'm going to sound racist or anything, but there are some cultures that accept it. <laughs> yeah? No, there are. So we know it. Yeah? So they'll just, you know, you're not in the mood, smack around the head, you know? Like, that, that is, uh, you know, not what we're looking for. We're looking for it here. You know, there's one rabbi who used to talk about this online. I haven't seen him around talking about it recently, but there's a rabbi. He used to scream at men about this, saying that you're raping your wives. If she's not consenting, she's not in the mood, she's not in the flow, you're literally raping a wife. Like what you said. Like that's how hard he takes it. He's like, if they don't want it, you don't get it. Tough luck. And in the kasuba, it's called ona. Ona means you're giving her her pleasure. These are one of the obligations you have when you get married, yeah? You have to provide her needs. That means it's her needs, not yours. So it's a switcheroo in the whole headspace. Yeah, the advertisement and hunting world, like the Andrew Tate kind of person, is telling you, you've got to hunt those women and get what you want, and it's about your needs. The real true way of looking at it is looking at her needs. What does she need? I'm not a hunter, I mean, she's not an animal. She's, a, she's, a, she's got tremendous value. And that is one of the challenges. So really listening to someone else. There was a famous story of, of rabbis who used to meet with lots and lots of people. I don't know if you've ever had a meeting with a real rabbi, like a spiritual guide, someone who's really deep, spiritual dude, who knows, knows, knows about the inner workings of creation, like deep, a real deep, mystical, spiritual guy. I don't know if you've ever had the merit to meet with such people, I have. So when you meet with these kind of people, you, what, what's the most amazing feeling is, is that they really get you. They empty themselves for themselves, and they, they, you just, even though you're like, wow, this person's a special person, but the most important part is that they really, almost like mirror you back to you, a whole new level of you that you didn't even know about. And you start to like, wow, they really get me in a deep way. Yeah, like one of my rabbis said, I went to see my rabbi with my wife, and he said to my wife, he said, your husband's like, I can see like he's quite a sexual person, like he's in this area, like he has an energy and you know I wasn't expecting anyone to say that, especially a rabbi, to my wife and she, was, she just smiled and I was smiling as well because it was true, like I'm not going to deny it and it was a certain perception that he was honest enough and real enough to see a certain side of me that was true, it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this intimacy course because I'm the right guy for it, but the point is that that's the the, the fifth stage of everything we'll be learning is to really listen. To empty yourself and be with someone who can perceive you and to you be the kind of person to perceive them. To know them. To get to listen to what their needs are, who they are, and not to put your scripting, your way of thinking onto them. How many times if you, are you going to have an argument with a lady is, is because you were trying to tell them what you, they need to think? Or they're trying to tell you what you need to think? How much are you actually listening to them? You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's actually a real like, effort for most men and for most women probably also. I'm not a woman, so I don't know, but I assume it is. To actually escape yourself for a minute and just to be able to listen to another human being, this is going to open up doors of intimacy and relationships. And that's when you get to this next level, which we talked about, the synergization. Then you can really join with the other person. And you know what's so amazing about it? Then there's real pleasure. The pleasure's real. It's lasting, it's eternal, it's, it's satisfying, it's the deepest kind of connection because now you're really knowing someone. That's what it says by the first man. He knew Chava, he knew the first lady last two weeks ago. So she was part of them. Yeah, he knew her. But it's so, that's the concept we learn out from him, yeah, that he, to know someone is intimacy. Intimacy is to really get to intimacy, come to see intimacy, even in English, intimacy. Yeah, come into me, see, see this, what I am inside, who I am as a person. <coughs> that kind of bonding 
is a game changer. That will, that will get you to get laid as we started the class. You got that, man? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we've got to figure out, how to really get to know the other person. So that is the sixth stage. So now let's go over a little bit. We started this whole session last year. There was a war this time. And we were already like all over the place and the classes weren't formalized again and you had no program almost. The, the people who preceded you dudes. And the, it was a hard beginning to this kind of winter time period. But this year, you guys have got it good. You, don't have, a, you have a war, but it's a war that's not ruining your, your schedule, your program, your life. You have an opportunity to really experience and learn something. So what we started off the course with, being proactive, that means you guys have to make this year worthwhile, worth it. To make it really solid, make it a really strong experience. That was the first concept and how are you going to do that? By having real relationships, by being face to face. We mentioned you have to initiate relationships. That was the first point we started with. The second point was to get to know what your goals and dreams are, get to know who you are, so then you can join with another person who they have their goals and dreams, which fits up with the listening aspect as well. Then you had the third point was to be more effective with your use of time here. Then we had the fourth point, how to win. How to make sure the other person gets his success. Then you get to the fifth point of really, really listening, which is what we're doing today. And then we get to the sixth point, and then you can have intimacy. Then you can join with another person in a real way, in a way that's satisfying and deep and meaningful. So that is the six stages we've covered in three sessions. And in the middle of that, we had a special section about porn and about addictions. Okay, so now I'm going to open up for you guys to ask questions, whoever wants to ask whatever you want about anything, it might not even be these points, I don't care, you can talk, talk to me, I'm here for you, and uh, we have, how long, we have another half an hour, so a bit less, so whoever wants to talk about something in this area, because my job is also to listen, not just to speak, so what do you want to say, anyone, I felt like you had something to ask, no, anyone, anyone, uh, you said you have to be um, intimate, right? Yeah. Uh, like you have to know the intimacy, you know the inside. Intimacy. Are you talking about like physically or spiritually? It means everything because they, even like we mentioned about one of the things opening up a woman, a lot of it is with foreplay. Yeah, that means opening them up. Obviously, that it has to be with what they want. The best kind of foreplay is letting them guide it rather than you try and you have your your tricks. Yeah. Let them guide you through it. Because they know they're, if, they, if they're they not all women, do. not all, but my, the one you, the kind of women you'd want to be with is someone who knows their body. Yeah? Yeah. Some unfortunately don't, and then you need to help them, but, you know, or they need to get help outside. But the point that hopefully a woman knows her own body, and that she'll know what will help, what won't. And that's, a, once again, having the humility or the, the more like less selfish approach of letting them guide you what's going to work for them, instead of you sort of forcing on your game onto them. That's right. an important point, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Um, I mean, you can ask anything. I'm sure you've had questions in life. I do. You know, I wish when I was your age. I used to go, I told you, I used to go up to rabbis, they'd be like, go learn more Talmud. Or like, uh, I, you know, I brought, ask my brother, you know, my brothers would be like, you know, it would be like more superficial, like how you can get it, you know, but not really like explaining like what we're doing. Yeah, Any, anyone got a question? It was all very like superficial, you know, before I came to my head. Um, I know some, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of Jews recommend, but they recommend getting married like early, like early Yeah, 20s. yeah, early 20s, yeah. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? So it's, it's a definitely advisable based on the spiritual understandings of man and woman, especially nowadays with how much energy is driven towards that ener that whole sexual energy that we have within us. And so therefore, if we're not like, in marriage, we're probably having challenges in the spiritual sense. But um, I do think it has to be with, with balance and coming from a real place. Because if a person's not really ready yet, it can sort of blow up. It could be more worth, worth, worthless than it's worth. Like you're just getting into all kinds of challenges like as a divorce is so common nowadays. So you have to sort of really make sure that you're on other levels other than just sexually needing, you have to be in a good place emotionally. And no, also it doesn't always have to mean bringing children into the world. Like we have birth control, we have, and even according to the spiritual world, 
you know, I, ideally when you get married you have children because you have the mitzvah straight away of, of bringing down children. But if you're going to bring it down into a divorced, messed up home, so then that might not be the best thing. So you have to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about and find out, like, how can I do this marriage thing in a way that I'm ready. That's why having someone objective outside of yourself is a real game changer. Like, nowadays I have sex therapists or rabbis or revisons and people who know what they're talking about who are guide in this area, who can give you that more objective approach of, because it is something which we're quite subjective about because we all want to get laid as we started the class. Now we need to know how to do it in a way that's more responsible. So yeah, if you can do it responsibly and you feel you're ready for it and, you, and even better if people around you agree. I mean, you don't, I can't always listen to everyone around what they say, but it helps when you have a supportive environment to what you're doing. So to have that kind of sphere of influence with your parents, your family, people like get it, that you're ready for that. Because when I wanted to get married, I asked my rabbis and most of them said, yeah, go for it. There was one or two like, eh, I don't see the already yet. But I'm happy I didn't listen to those ones because I, even if I wasn't that ready, we went on a journey together and we figured it out. And we're still on a journey together figuring it out. And my children are still on the journey figuring it out. Very, marriage is a journey. Itself. Yeah. To, to wait till you're ready, like financially and emotionally and spiritually, and you've got everything, all the box ticked. You know, that's a very like secular sort of way of looking at marriage. And it might seem to work in some level, but in a, there's, other, there's other issues that they come. Because now they've had loads and loads of experiences, and now they're coming with a lot of sexual baggage, or they're coming with um, certain preconceived notions of what marriage should be, or they've already got sick of each other, and now there's no excitement anymore, because they've already lived with each other for a bunch of years, so there's none of that, that whole initial energy <coughs> didn't enter into marriage together, so they've already like, lost that feeling. And, you know, th there's all kinds of drawbacks in that approach. And spiritually, it's not recommended, obviously, yeah? to just wait and be with someone and... That's not, that's not the spiritually, uh, spiritual understanding because, you, you know, we mentioned last time, the seed is precious and it needs to, to go to a good cause, not just to uh, sexual experience. That's, that's part of the yeah, spiritual understanding. But if, you know, if anyone wants to ask any more questions, like, I know these are a little bit difficult topics, that's why probably half the guys aren't here, but um, at the same time, it's a topic worth listening to because we all struggle with it, all of us. So it's, it's a universal struggle. All men and women are now, you know, in their way are including this, but they just have their own way of, of approaching it. So we, we all have a struggle with this. Yes? Do you think that the whole, like, no, not, no, whatever thing is a good idea? Odd pump? Say again? Do you think no, not, no, whatever is a good idea? No, not November? Where is it? Or just joining in December? Oh. You know, wait, I've heard of sober October. Wait, but... heard of no, not no. <laughs> so, it's I'm learning something. It's good. Know, it's like an internet thing. Like you yeah. just don't jerk off for all of November, and then if you pass, you do this thing called the third day of December. But you jerk off progressively uh. before every day. Yeah. So what? On the first day. Like day one, you jerk off once. Like day two, you do it yeah. twice. Day three, wow. three times. Yeah. And then you get to thirty-one times. <laughs> Wow, thank God. Because you know, I've been in the other way around, how to like masturbate less, yeah? So th that's the kind of program no, I'm hearing it's about. A reward for not jerking off for the whole... Uh, no, that's a reward. Imagine having to struggle. I, I mean, I, my, my story, as you know, I told you, my story was that when I actually stopped masturbating, I felt energized. That was like the yeah, whole porn too. session no, last night. Sure. So I felt energized, so why would I... If I felt so energized, and so vibrant, why would I want to like give into that just for that short term pleasure? Like my life is better. My feeling, my vibrancy, my creative energy, my relationships improved, my sexual relationships improved, and everything it's was just better. Like, what if I got like percent, like percent, like I was with a yeah. girl one night? Like, would that, like, do you think that that would seep my energy as if I had like the night prior to one but, yeah, but the other thing is with that is now you're, when you, we mentioned, if you want to talk about it spiritually, um, I, I, you're I downloading got, your energy into someone else. I'm it's pretty heavy. A, I'm using her as a flashlight. Like, I, yeah. like, I, I get what you're trying to say in the yeah. sense that there's no like connection. Like, she's just a piece of me to me. But like, just like, my like, that would be like, if it's with consensus and, and she's like agreeable and that's where it's at. Like, so yeah, spiritually it's not good. 
But physically and emotionally, as long as you're not, you know, got any disease going on or babies or anything like extra, like there's protection, then you don't. There's worse things people can do, you know. But do you think that though, physically speaking, like I would feel as like lethargic and shitty as if I had like jerked off the night before? I think there'll be a moment of like dog pooping because it's like you've, as we said, got late. Like that's the kind of thing a man pines for. But it's probably healthier than just watching porn in my like basement. So the difference is, once again, there's more of a. It might be it might be more healthy than being one of these like serial killers in your in your basement, but um, or one of these you know school shooters or something like some of these weirdos that are sitting in their basement trolling people. It's better than that. But the point is, and we did say being one of the first points was connecting with other people is a very important trait that a lot of people have lost nowadays. Face to face connection. Well, I'm saying it for myself, I spend way too much screen time, like we need to connect with people. I'm going to England in uh, two weeks, yeah? So, is it two weeks? Pretty soon, yeah? It's the uh, 19th of November, so it'll be two weeks tomorrow. So, I'm going for a while. I'm going to December the 1st. But the amazing thing is, for you guys, that if you really enjoy the class and session, that the divine providence was when I booked the tickets, and I wasn't thinking so much about this, because I don't know if I... I hadn't even got involved with this uh, this year's schedule yet. When I booked it, it worked out that I'm flying the day after our next class, and I'm coming back the day before the class after that. So I'm not missing any classes. Yeah. So that that's just like the divine providence that it worked out that way. Yeah. Another good thing is I get to see a Spurs game and take my son to one. So no, I'm really sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> that's what one of my friends said. F Spurs. He was like, wow, yeah, That's, he started feeling sorry for me also. Yes, He's an Arsenal fan, so what are you going to do? A gooner, as they say. But anyway, he, he literally sent me a picture the other day of him at, him at Spurs, when they, when they beat Spurs, swear, with him and all his kids swearing at me. <laughs> that was his selfie. But uh, we're very close. I'm actually going back to one of the reasons I'm going is for his simchas and my brother's simchas. Bastard. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. So, um, funny enough, they were, his, my brother's kids were in a movie with Hugh Grant. Would you believe that? Yeah, it's called uh, Diary of what's it called? The one big kid. What's it called? Diary of one big kid. No. They made those into movies. Uh, Something yeah. diary. What's it called? Didn't he end up killing his? All those movies. Empire it's been a bunch. Well, I love Empire Diaries. No, no Empire Diaries. What's the famous one? It's like. Dear Evan Hansen. Something Diaries. Uh, Hugh Grant's in it. And, uh, yeah, I think no one. Joanne, Joe's, Joe, Joanne, Joanne story. I don't know. It will be all around the cinemas, you'll see it. Uh, oh my god, he did. Anyway, so they're in that movie with him. So him, he said he pulled up in the nicest car he grown. Like, you can't believe it. And uh, all the other famous people in there as well. It was really cool. But um, that's the, they're making a simple book, Shem. So it'll be interesting. But the thing I'm so excited about is, is the face-to-face -face interaction with people like I've spoken to people on the phone I've zoomed people and I've whatsapped and all this stuff but to actually go back to England and sit with my crew go out to eat with my crew like it's a fat setup yeah, like, many options, no we're, we're, we're good we, my friends know the best we went one time to Rubens have you been in Rubens in town it's burned down like yeah I heard that so we know we're going to West Hampstead now oh, um, yeah no, 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 no. that's it that's where we're going yeah, it's best. That's where we're going. But you guys know. So, no, so anyway, so he's already booked it. So, but it's just getting together with my crew. Is that it? You finished with a piece of meat? No, I really have to go to the bathroom. Oh, you can come back though. I, I, like, I, I, go, go, I, I don't want to like pee my pants here. Like, there's Please not, don't. Nothing, nothing with you. Really. Please don't. If you're about to fail, don't you remember, Jeremy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyway. You know what? Keep it as no, not November, and leave it the December. Like just <laughs> go the full way. Like and it's not cool. It's going not December, is it? It's going no. What? Well, that's the point. Yeah. I don't know. Look, I don't need. Thank God, I haven't yeah. masturbated. I don't even know how long. Yeah, like since I was like eighteen or something. So I know. I know. I need it not. So I don't know why everyone feels like it's such a basic human need. Maybe it's, it's just a basic human need. I think there's kind of an issue of like. You get very unclear thoughts sometimes when you don't jerk off and you're really horny. Um, you get like thoughts of doing some horrible things to some people. <laughs> Look, because you're not jerking off. Like, okay. Jerking off kind of release. If it like, means you're going to go kill someone instead, no, so it's always like, about. Yeah, like you know, in the Torah, the way it works is you have a virus, you have things you shouldn't do, and then you have things you definitely should not do. 
So there's levels. So if it means this so prevents these are the this. That you shouldn't do. Huh? These are the people that you shouldn't do, just like that also. Standards. Yeah. That's one yeah, thing we talked exactly. about. Even in the North London community, which isn't religious, they know there's still standards. I don't know now, back in the so, day, when I was a kid. Standards don't exist yeah. anymore. At 3 a.m. when you're in your room and your phone is fucked, there's no standards. Well, that sounds like that's what's going on because you have these apps. You can literally, it's like, if you, you call up, you're hungry, you want to have a midnight feast, and so now you have the other kind of midnight feast, you know? So, that, you know, maybe that's what's going on. No, but. no, these days you don't, you don't, you don't go, you see, it's weird, because you think people are turned to porn. No, not apps. porn. I mean apps to get a lady to come around. Like oh, Tinder. yeah. Like Tinder and all this stuff. I never use that, so I don't know, but I've, I've seen movies or whatever. Like, it seems pretty crazy. Like, you just sort of app in this person and then, like, right switch or whatever the word is, and you just, you know, yeah, or, or left swoosh, no, and it's like, you just hook up culture. Yeah. The whole hookup culture just seems pretty crazy. But um, I never lived it, so you know, I did it in a different way, the old school way, but you know, that, was, that was humanity for thousands of years. Like, this is a whole new story. But, and that's why one of the things important about this session is that we're discussing stuff on a whole new level because there is a whole new level of experience. Like you said, you literally can just, you know, through an app, just make it happen. It wasn't that easy. You, know, you would not find a woman walking around in the middle of the night in, in a lot of places, just like that. You know, yeah, truth yeah, is, they did. I mean, I, I went to Tel Aviv the other day, like a while back, and I went to a wedding, and I had a very good night with all my boys, and my, my friend was staying there. My, no, it was a good night, like my friend, so we're gonna see oh, them in okay. London. Nothing like that. And uh, you know, I was, I was like the religious dude of the crew, you know, like behaving myself somewhat, but, and we end up, Going on the way back, uh, my friends like didn't invite me back around like to sleep over because it was like two, three in the morning. I told me we got back from Tel from Hatzliya to Tel Aviv where the wedding was. We're now in Tel Aviv, and I'm like I'm just gonna go figure out how to get back. Like, truth is, I have a meeting in the morning in Tel Aviv, so I'm gonna figure out where to stay. So it's all good. So I didn't stay by my friend. So I went for a walk towards where I needed to have the meeting. You know, a beautiful night. Had a great night. Walk along Tel Aviv, and I see Tel Aviv, and there's a whole vibe going on, like a whole bunch of these tall Russian girls walking around, the clubs there, you know, like, stuff going down, yeah? And I was thinking, wow, this is crazy, like, there it's so, and, I, you know, I'm coming from Jerusalem, I was in a different world in that time, and it was, it was quite, like, overwhelming from where I was coming from, my lifestyle in that time, to see how active the streets are. I mean, the truth is, in Jerusalem, it's pretty active now, in the middle of the night as well. You know, my son was just, sent me some pictures of him in a bar, you know, in the middle of the night. It's, it goes on everywhere. You know, that's part of the world now. We have a nightlife. But I, I, I personally, I didn't end up, I ended up in the shul and I ended up, I went to a mikvah, I ended up praying, and I went to my meeting in the morning. It was like right next to there, right in the middle of Tel Aviv. I couldn't believe I found a shul and a mikvah in the middle of Tel Aviv, but I did. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's all about what you want. So if, if you want to hook up, you want it, you'll get it. Whatever you oh, not that long, but I fell asleep like not that long because I prayed Nate. So by the time time went quick, there's a lot of walking around. So what I'm saying is, it's about what you want in the end of the day. Like in the end now, it's got to a point where if you really want something, you'll get it. So if you really want to hook up, you will get hooked up. The problem is what kind of hook up? What kind of effect does it have on your life? Is it making your life higher quality, a better life? Or is it just a short term fulfillment? And I always want to play the long, long game in my life, personally. Like, I'm trying to plant seeds that bear fruit. Fruit. I want to have a fruitful life. I want to have a life that has meaning, purpose. That's the kind of hookup I'm looking for. My, I know with my wife, every time I connect with her, it's a level further in our relationship. It's a development. It's a responsibility. It's a journey. Like you said before, it's a journey in marriage. It's a journey. And that is really important to me that I feel like I'm always growing and I'm always achieving new levels and the intimacy is in a whole higher level than I experienced before I was married. Because now there's trust and you can be totally one together. There's no, there's no back in my mind, oh, I wish she was nice or I wish she was this. You, you've dropped all those false realities and you're just like, this is my woman, this is my person I'm investing my energy in day after day and she's investing in her energy in me, and we're, we're one. And you start to really invest in that whole experience. And it's a, it's a whole game changer in, in the relationship level. And that's something which, you know, not everyone's blessed with. 
you know, you guys have told me a bit that you've got a divorced family and, you know, I've got a divorced family. I, you know, not everyone's going through, not everyone's finding that kind of relationship. But it's something worth trying, aiming for and investing in because it, it's, it's a different level of experience of, of intimacy and, and marriage that you're not going to get just by hooking up on the streets or some app. So that's my story, you know, like in terms of these two things of listening really carefully. Like if you can really get it down, it, you, you'll have a person there who will want to open up to you. She'll want to connect with you. She'll want it. And that's a whole different level of experience. She'll want the intimacy. She'll understand that she's with someone who loves her and respects her and values her and appreciates her for who she is. And it's a whole different kind of love. Like she's, she's on fire for love for you. Like she, she needs you in the deepest way and she wants you in the deepest way and she wants to give you pleasure in the deepest way. And it's a, it's just, it's a whole nother experience. And that's where we get to this sixth concept of joining together another person. But all the steps before are crucial as well. You need to initiate real relationships. You need to have goals and dreams and not just be some superficial person who's just floating through the world. Actually have your game plan for what you're here for. You need to have effective way of living. Use your time in Israel to become the best you can be in your skill set and who you are, with your personal mission. And then you need to win-win. You need to make sure people around you are, are winning this game. We're a group. You're, you're a program. You didn't come here by yourself. You're not sitting in some dorm by yourself. You're in a program. Try, try get everyone else into the program. Try bring, the, God, this room should be full. This is stuff everyone's dealing with. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Try get the other boys to be part of this because they need, we all need help with this. I need help with this. If, if I'd had this down, I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd be effective at talking to you about it because part of the, the realness is I'm struggling with this as well. And that's where you get to the listening one. It's really hard to listen to another person, especially a woman. They've got a different way of thinking, different way of talking. Yeah, we, we made jokes about it before, but women, you know, it's a hard one to really listen to a woman and what they're feeling and to, they go through their emotions and to really pay attention to them when there's so much other seemingly nice options. And then you get to that real intimacy that we're talking about. So what we're going to talk about the next, next two classes, one, I'd like you to bring your bit more your game, a bit more of the crew need to be here. I want you to, because I'm literally flying out the next day, I want to go feeling like I've you know, given my best to you guys, and I want us to go over a little bit more in a deeper way what, what you want to get out of intimacy. I want to hear from you guys, your experience. Yo, what do you want out of this? What do you want out of this course? Think about it the next few weeks, ask the guys, I'll put it in the chat. What do you guys want to get out of this course the next two sessions? I know what I'm going to teach, but I want it to come from you guys. And I want to also figure out, like, what is, as a Jewish people, like, we're here, this is the program, Jewish peoplehood, an informed active sense of belonging to Jewish people. What is our mission in the world? What are we here for? Like, it's, it's a whole different level. Once you know what you're here to service and do, you're, you're much more engaged in your life than if you're just floating around to the next thing, the next thing, whatever the... The, what do they call the guys here, the counsellors, the mid madrikim they push you into this thing, they push you into that thing. It's got to come from you guys in the end of the day, because it's your life. And you've only got one life, and every minute of life is precious. Like, if you'd ask someone, what's the most precious thing in life, what would you say? Money? Time. Yeah, time is the most precious thing. So that it's really about, like, saying now, what I want to use this gift of life, you know? When I hear about all the boys on the fronts, you know, in Lebanon and Azar and all these, there's so much crazy stuff going on. And my son's telling me what kind of war he's going through and every day is, is a miracle that he gets through it. And thank God a lot of the, the Hezbollahs run away from the border. Yeah, if they would be there waiting for them, it would be a different story. Thank God they've run away. They've left a tremendous amount of equipment. This is what they were planning to use on all of us. So there's a lot of miracles going on. So what is that gift of life that the soldiers are fighting us for us all for? For us just to sort of chill out and just have a fun year and hook up and this and that? Or do we have a bigger goal? Like, for example, right now, we won't mention the elections. It's literally tom tomorrow. We'll hopefully, hopefully we'll have some clarity by tomorrow night. Let's hope. Maybe it's not too optimistic because it will all get resolved by tomorrow night at 10 p.m. at America time. Imagine. Yeah, I don't think so. But just in case it does, so by Wednesday morning, we'll know who's the president. You never know. Not that it's that important, but it is pretty important, especially when you consider what's the values of being discussed 
and the fight that's going on. And one of the big things that's being fought against is family values. Now, the Jewish people were meant to be the leaders of family values. We have Avram and Sarah, this week's Pasha, and then the next time Yitzhak and Rivka, and the Pasha after that, Yaakov and his four wives. We have family values. That's the Torah is filled with it. It's all about family values. It's all about family, mishpocha. You even ask the most not religious Jew, but they'll tell you it's all about mishpocha. You ask an Italian, family is the main thing. You ask a, a good non-Jewish guy, he'll tell you what's the most important thing in his life, family. Yeah? So family values, we've got to show that this is important to us. And one of the ways that, that you get to strong family values is doing intimacy right. Yeah, intimacy is the glue. It's the glue that holds the family together. Yeah, a husband and wife that are having good intimacy, the, the kids know it. Without them knowing what intimacy is, or knowing what your kind of sex life you're having, but they'll <coughs> feel the love in the house. One of the ways they'll feel the love in the house is that the, the husband and wife, the father and mother, are having good intimacy. So this is pretty important. This is like the future of humanity kind of stuff. So we're in that kind of end game world war for, for values, for good things, and that's what's going on. Like the, the wokeism and the Islamism and all that other stuff, they want to pretty much put an end to real family values. They'll say, oh, but Islam is about family values. Not if the, I didn't want to be racist, but not if the guy, some terrorist, kill, threatening to kill people and beating up his, whoever, whichever woman he decides that day to beat up because he wants to dominate women. That's his mindset. That's not family values. Family values comes, good man. Family values comes, comes with a respect. Yeah, for the woman. We mentioned that before. See, how can you listen to someone you don't respect them? If you don't respect them, you're not listening. Yeah, think about it. Yeah, how do I get your respect? What do I need to do? Tell me, I don't care. If I need to send more pics of, you know, I'm not going to send DIK pics, but if I need to send pics of what I look back in the day, yeah? Like, you know, to, so I was just as cool and out there. Whatever works, I don't care. But the point is, what I'm saying is valuable. Because it's, it's a literal difference for humanity. It makes a big difference. And each one of you have, as we mentioned, have your sphere of influence, have your hushbar, well, please God, have your relationships and your intimacy and your ability, ability to value the other person. It will give her a feeling of confidence you can't imagine, knowing that someone really loves her, really cares for her. And that will carry over to your children. You know, there's so much mental health stuff going on. Most of it is because people aren't connecting anymore. Yeah, most people are sick in the head because they're not really connect not connecting to themselves, not connecting to their wife or their girlfriend, they're not connecting to their husband, their father, their mother, their, their brothers, their sisters. Everyone's disconnected. Oh, we've got all this internet. Yeah, but it's just fostered lack of connection. So it's just 10x whatever crap was going on before. So people aren't really connecting, not really talking, not really connecting. And intimacy is, is the glue. It's, it's a gift. My wife often says that there's no bigger gift than intimacy. It's like a... It's such, it didn't have to be so amazing and pleasurable. Yeah? You, you want your wife saying that. Yeah? You want your girl to say that to you. It doesn't have to be so amazing. It doesn't have to be this amazing experience that takes you into another world where you don't have any problems, you don't have financial issues, you don't have worries, you don't have pain, you don't have health issues. You're just in this space of pure connection, of oneness, of love. It's the highest thing. It's better than drugs, better than heroin or anything. Better than anything. It's the biggest high, yeah, if it's done right. So to not make the steps, we, all the steps we've been discussing in this class, to get to that level where you can experience the highest moment of relationship and connection and to have it as a part of your life, not just as a one-off and not just as some, you know, yeah, sponsored holiday to the Bahamas or Hawaii or some, you know, it's a one-off thing in your life. This, we're talking about this becomes a... a a real part of your life. So your life is enhanced and it carries over to your children, it carries over to the community. You have a love. When you're together in shul or in a, in a communal experience, you are coming there as a, as, a, as a couple, as one. And that's like a dream energy to give over to the world. That's becoming a role model to the world. And you don't have to do that much. Like you don't have to become a millionaire, you have to be Elon Musk to get that, you know? One of the things, let's give credit to, say, for example, Trump. He, had, he might have had a bunch of relationships, but at the end of the day, he's still got family. Yeah? The other Shmerla, they don't even have family. It's a disaster. Yeah? I just looked up Trump's granddaughter, Kai. Yeah? Came up in my wife's feed, and, and my daughter was talking about her. She seems like a really cool girl. 
granddaughter Trump, really cool, beautiful, living a normal, healthy life, so, the kind of woman you'd want to connect with, like really good values, the way it should be. I'm sorry to say, but the other crew, not to get political, but never, you know? I don't know what's going on over there. They're just freaks, yeah? Like, sorry to say, but they are. So, they're children, grandchildren. It's, it's never, like, so, we're looking at the, hu the future of humanity. They talk about future. It's pretty obvious who's going to have a better future, this or that. Yeah? And the Jewish people, all the more so. We have to set a standard. Without getting political, just being who we are. We don't even have to go and get voted in or anything. Just by us being who we are, being the most authentic Jewish people that we can be, with our values, that would be the biggest light into the world. And that's all we have to do to really win this world. We just have to be the best Jewish people we can be. Yeah? As long as we're being ourselves and authentic and we're not caring what the rest of the world says about us, we will win this war. Not only that, we'll win all the wars to establish ourselves in this world as a role model and a light to the world. And it comes all, if you go back into the Torah, you go back into our Masorah, into our tradition, it goes back to Avram and Sarah this week. What did Avram do when he, set, when he get, first gets to the place? What did he do? Take care of his Tesla, make sure it's getting charged, or he took care of his woman? What did he do? He took care of his wife. He set up the tent for her. His focus was on her being in a good space, being comforted, taking care of her needs. Yeah? One of the Peshatim is he made a lot of neshamas, he made a lot of souls in Haram. What's that? So the Rechaim says he was with his wife and he, gave, he connected with her in an intimate way and he brought down a lot of souls. And who were those souls? Us. He, Avram Vida, even when he didn't have any children, he was bringing down souls. He was bringing down the potential of our people till now. That's the kind of intimacy that was going on back then. It was a, it was a long term game. He had within him all the potential for all of us and he was only could bring it out through his wife, and even if it didn't manifest as a child, it manifested as souls that came down and eventually would become children. Uh, through Yitzhak, but through who we are sitting here now. You understand what's going on, that it became the synergization, the joining of a husband and wife, it multiplies into a, into a nation. Yeah? How many people that went through the Holocaust and lost everything, and now they have hundreds and thousands of grandchildren? Loads. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you for the art. No, the creative space is great. So anyone, any one last question before we end off? Anything? No? We're good? But no, right, the challenge is, two weeks from now, you come with your game. I've got what to say, but I want you to come with your game. Bring in the other boys. And please, God, we're going to have an amazing, amazing uh, last two sessions, because they are the next two are the last two. And it will be around my England trip, so I'm going to be excited to be with all my friends and family in person and have that vibe, like I'm saying, relationships in person. We need to have these classes in person. There's, there's, it's a different level, and that means you guys need to come with your game and talk about what you want to talk about in this area. Because the most important part is you get something out of this, not me. I'm, I'm learning. I learn now what no, not November is. I didn't know before I came here. I know that's a joke, but I'm, I'm serious. That's, I'm happy to learn anything. I'm, I'm open-minded, very open-minded. I'll talk about anything. Yeah. So you come with something, I'm happy to talk about it. You want to talk about, I don't know, you know. What would you want to talk about? Tell me. Like, what do you guys, we, talk, we already touched on a few things you guys get excited about. You have to think about it. What would you want to talk about? If you want to DM me, you can message me. Uh, you've got my number on the WhatsApp. And it, I'm here for you guys. Make the most of the, of the people who are in your program for you. I'm one of them. I'm here for you. I, I, I prepare for this. I'm excited for this. And I think there's, we're getting some points. Everyone can come away with today two main points. If you really learn to listen to the other person, you will have an intimate relationship with that person in a deep way. And you'll get to know each other in a deep way. What if you and don't if, want to listen? Now, if you don't want to listen, if they're not worth listening to, don't listen. They're not the right person. That already helps. You already now made a sort of choice. No, like, in general, choice. let's say, like, sh like, you enjoy listening and you like your, but, like, when, like, at the time that you're feeling bad, like, you're just not in the mood, you just can't listen. But then that's, that's, that's very good, because that's, we mentioned that in the third point of all the classes, when we, two, two, four weeks ago, whenever it was, we mentioned that you have to use your time effectively, so part of that is knowing yourself, now is not an effective time for me to listen. And you communicate that to the other person. So now is not a good time. I'm not in a good space. I know you need to really express yourself, and I'm apologizing for my lack of ability to be there for you. I'll make up for it. And you do make up for it. You know, one of the things I've done is I've employed a therapist, not for me, for my wife. 
Yeah, so she can have someone to talk to about things that I'm not so good at. I have to accept that I'm not the full picture. There needs to be other people in the game. Yeah, and that's okay. You have the humility and take out the dosh and pay for someone who's more professional and knows what he's doing. And he'll, he'll talk to her about things she needs to talk about. Yeah? But the point is it's worth investing in and you should have a beautiful rest of the week. And I'm looking forward to keep doing this.